Welcome back to the MLG Winter Championships here. Now checking out more 4v4 Halo Reach action. My name is Bravo, and I'm joined by Walshy. Now, we just saw, uh, you know, that last game, status quo, pretty dominating performance over Shady Halo kits, none of them going positive. And we're jumping right into this game, Countdown Team Slayer. Obviously, uh, I do not know which one that SQ vetoed, but we're going to start off with Hysteria this next game. See how Shady Halo kids can pull this back. Yeah, let's talk a little bit, uh, analyze a little bit, Dave, uh, yourself and I. This opening strategy that Shady Halo kids uses here. Yeah, last time they melted Enable right off the start. Let's see if they pick out and single out one player to just kill. Right there, actually all eight members of both teams staying alive. Uh, so now Hysteria grabs this the sniper, rare. no surprise there. Rarely see someone go straight for the sniper on this map. You generally see teams both bait it, and Hysteria must know. He's just reacting to how other teams play. Just like, right. realize, you know what, I'm just going to... Wow, he gets both those kills. Off to a great start, Hysteria. Three kills. Oof. Nice job. Barely misses that headshot, yeah. but that was very interesting. Yeah, very that kill gets cleaned up. Nice job there. So they're up to an early 4-1 lead. And they also, Elamite has the rockets around uh, the big door, so they have both power weapons, and they're going to be looking to grab top control now. I would have liked to see Hysteria, since he saw one of his teammates already up in that radio. Um, looks like they do not have control anymore, but he should have lifted up and his team still had control top. Mm -hmm. I did not notice they must have dropped down or had too many people up top on uh, status quo, so he made the right play, actually, staying level two. But right. had they had top, he wants to give the sniper over a radio. It's going to be so hard to get him out of there once he gets there. Uh, so far, uh, we've talked a lot, Dave, about where to bring uh, the sniper, uh, excuse me, the rockets on this map. Obviously, S3, S2 area, depending on the game type, is where you're going to want to bring the rockets. As far as sniping goes, do you have uh, any kind of spots uh, throughout playing this map last year that you like? Well, top is the dominant position on this map if your team is in control. Right. So if they have control radios, you want to hold that sniper radio. You can shoot down those long, straight paths, uh, easy shots to small door. You can shoot street to street, covering your teammates. Right. Um, but if you do not have radios, right where Hysteria is at right now, you want to control outside together as a team, and then you can hopefully take radios back. Ooh, nice back of the headshot there from Hysteria. Oh, hey, let's uh, see if can so I think you're saying also want to uh, stay out here for camo, obviously, when that spawns. Uh, you're and camo is, is not of huge importance in most cases. Right. It, uh, it obviously is an advantage, no matter how you look at it. But for example, I would like to just stay at top at radios. Like, camo is not the same power up as it was in right. Halo 1, for example. Yeah. And we saw actually, faces off, we saw actually yesterday uh, Instinct kind of letting Classic get the camo time and time again, you know, and it ended up uh, winning them that series. So uh, I'm glad you said that, Dave. Camo, not as important. Obviously, still a priority on the map, yeah. but not necessarily important. I want to remind you guys for the Xperia Sony smartphone poll, go ahead and tweet or text your team's code uh, to vote. You can tweet at poll or text 22333 to vote uh, SQ or SHK to vote for your pick here. And I, I'll be the first to admit, I am not a Hysteria fan really at all, but he is playing nearly perfect this yeah. game. Yeah. He is playing so well. Yeah, but here you see he still has that sniper in his hands. Oh, hitting almost every body shot that he sees, Dave. Really nice there. And not being over aggressive. Yep. If, if he hits the body shot, he almost always backs down and waits for his team to finish that. We've seen that since the start of the game. He's been really disciplined. Uh, you know, that's kind of been a characteristic of Hysteria. He's, He's always been a so smart, smart player. Very yeah, smart. Exactly. I agree with that. Right now, so 23 to 13. Hysteria still hanging around S2 with his sniper rifle, kind of waiting for uh, teammates to call out uh, the enemy right here. Always good communication. Oh, Hysteria, Jesus. amazing quick scope. Uh, you know, he after losing that first game, you can bet that he's a little bit fired up. He wants to stay in this series. He's had a great tournament so far. He's one of those players, especially through Halo 3, that he's if he gets on fire with a sniper, gets control. He can control the whole pace of the game and almost single-handedly win it for his team. Right, and he's pretty much doing that here. Now we're at 26 uh, to 17. It looks like he's about to die catwalk. Didn't know Flamesword was still crouching there uh, as he drops down. But what can, I mean, on a game play like this, Dave, I know it's sometimes difficult uh, to slow down a game. But on Countdown, we know that it's actually one of the maps that you can slow down the pace of the game because it is a little bit segmented. We've seen some big count uh, comebacks on Countdown. Yeah, um, you can slow it down for the fact that Camel's coming up. You want to revolve around the power weapon. Right. So if a team has radio set up, you're not going to just charge over there blindly. You want to make sure you get a sniper. You want to make sure you get a camel. You want to get some sort of advantage before charge over there. And one thing I want to point out is, all right, first off, Ace has rockets. So this is looking very good for Shady Halo kids. Mm -hmm. But um, right when Hysteria is originally going that spree, he got them that plus eight lead. Right. As long as they do not mess up, they're going to win this game. Right. They so have to just not mess up at this point. Yeah, his spree alone there, you know, could really be the turning point of this yep. whole game. I'm glad. Uh, excellent switch there, the genius. for the whole game. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. So excellent switch there, genius. Ace of Shady Halo kids now with the rockets. Kind of moving away from the S2, S3 area, but I like this. Jetpacking up to the radio. Might, nice job there using the wall to get that rocket. Three He's going to have, Ace, so gonna have yeah, one more left. so much credit to Stary and Ace so far this game. Yeah. Controlling the power weapons, giving yeah. them an 11 kill lead. And as simple as it says, it's just like, you do not have to try anything risky at this point. 
just do not lose power weapons. Go one for one. Do whatever you want. Like, you're going to win this game as long as you not get overly aggressive and mess up. As a coach, something I always, uh, you know, wanted to keep my team in mind was at, at obviously at like a, uh, when you're down maybe 46, 43, in those situations, you cannot afford to trade. However, when you're up 38 to 28, you know, you can really yes. afford to trade. You and don't, don't want to give up that's map That's something control. you want to get your teammates, uh, like when you're coaching your players, you want to get them in that mindset, being like, hey, it's okay to trade right, right now. Right. If you can go four shot melee somebody and just go one for one, Go ahead and do it. Whereas exactly. in those other situations, you want to sometimes avoid those close range battles. You do not want to trade. You're, like, you're actually more in stay alive mode. You cannot go one for one and win this game. So right. it's very, it's it's all about the team mindset at that point. Right. So now we're jumping on board with best man of Shady Halo Kids. Uh, they're up 40 to 32. Uh, see what he is up to around here, hanging out around S3. And best uh, man was top eight in free for all here. Yes, was he, he was. not? Yeah. That is impressive. A lot of people counted him out. They felt like he was under practice. He uh, had some personal, I believe, family obligations right. prior to this, um, some things he was going through. And he still just muscles through this event, plays very well, plays top eight free-for-all, helping this team possibly get to winner's bracket at finals. Yeah. It's just... Definitely one of his biggest events in recent yes. history. I had the privilege to team with the best man also. He's a great player. Like I just noticed he always seems to make great decisions, very smart. Right. Makes himself a very difficult kill. Mm -hmm. That's what I've always noticed. He, I, I always mock him because he jumps so much when he plays. Like, he's the reason that I really hated bumper jump at the beginning of Halo 3, and uh -huh. I eventually did switch to it for a bit. Right, myself as well. So now uh, they're baiting those rockets. Oh, and now look at the we scoreboard right comeback. here 41 to 38. Uh, Shady Halo Kids really has to be careful here if they want to control this game. Snake Bite now running around with the sniper. We've seen so much action around S2, Dave. Uh, is that kind of one of the major choke points on this map? Is that how you feel? Um around sniper times when it's coming up, especially at the 9-10 mark where sniper and rockets are coming up, is a very, very uh, popular spot to be at. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, outside of that, you're not going to see an insane amount. Snakebite obviously was just screen watching his teammate right there, trying to get where the action is at, and he did not get that trade right no. there. So that could come back to haunt them. You realize if they lose by one kill or so, um, it's hard to pinpoint one exact kill, but right there, he lost Sniper and could have traded kills right there. Mm -hmm. Now we see Royal 2 with the Rockets looking, checking the radios, making sure there's no enemies nearby. You see he just missed that Rocket, and in a 45-40 to 40 game, uh, that Rocket, if he had gotten that kill, would have made a big difference. So we're and with look his team having radios here, he, he obviously realizes that... Um, this next camo will be yeah, coming up. Sh Shady Halo Kids, they have Sniper, that's what I was getting at. They mm -hmm. have Sniper, he does not know who has camo. Actually, but, yeah, let's um, go to Ace. Excellent switch, Genius. Ace now with Camo Sniper. He's going to try to make something happen here. He wants to make their lead even bigger to give them a nice cushion. He has the shot. Amazing shot there by Ace uh, to hit Flamesword. He can only see a tip of the head there. Oh my gosh, he almost hit the radio shot as well. And that's uh, what Royal was scared about. That's why you see him hiding radio, because he did not know where Sniper's at. The worst thing he could do right now is he does want to get the rockets to S3 if possible, but he does not want to get headshot by a Sniper and lose his rockets for nothing. Right. So once he knows where the rocket guy's at, he or once he knows where the Sniper's at, he could possibly make that move to S3 or move somewhere else. But as of now, he has to just stay there. And he does move out. See, oh right gosh. there. And they actually cut up that kill. Hysteria moving in, gets the double, picks up this the rocket. Nice right turn. Right and Hysteria hits the triple kill. <laughs> uh, that was off the screen, but Hysteria moves in, finishes the first kill. Uh, melee for the second kill, and actually turns Shady Halo Kids. and hits the third kill. So they're right back in this series. Now we're tied up one to one here. Uh, Shady Halo Kids versus Status Quo. An excellent game there from Hysteria. Looking at the NOS performance of the match, uh, I think we're going to go to Hysteria on that one with his Absolutely. opening. Look at that. Going positive eight. Uh, amazing opening from him. A I believe spree. seven or eight spree right at the start. Yeah, and um, then also that close for triple kill to win. That's what kept them in the game the whole time. They uh, they just held on that lead, did not mess up. They had a close scare at the end there when the Naval got rockets, yeah. snake bite head snipe. But we're going to wrap this up real quick. We're going to find out what hill game they're going to be playing next, and I believe we're going to go to a quick commercial break.